Hi, everybody. Mayor Lou Manzo here with you again, um, featuring our remarkable spotlight piece that we now have added just recently to our Happening in the Hill. Uh, this month, we are focused on, you know, over, over, or our plan is to actually focus on groups and organizations or individuals um, that are doing remarkable things in our community. This month, we are focused on the Hoagies for Hope event at Clearview, uh, the staff and teacher support of that, and obviously the uh, student co-chairs uh, that run the event. And to get things started, I'm going to bring in uh, the, the actual Hoagies for Hope advisor, uh, you know, teacher advisor, uh, Paul Summers here. Paul, welcome. Hey, Mayor Manzo, good to see you. Thanks good for having you. me. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. And I wanted to talk to Paul a little bit before we spoke with our co-chairs uh, to give a little bit of background on the program, the event, and you know the, where it was born and how it got started. So tell us a little bit about that, Paul. Sure. So uh, we started Hoagies for Hope in 2015. Um, originally, we had sent some students over to Washington Township. They do an annual uh, Helping Hands Hoagie Sale. So they've done that for many years. Um, we said, why not bring it to Clearview? Why not uh, do it on our own and raise money for people in our community. And um, so we've done it since 2015. The first year we had no idea what to expect. We right. thought, you know, maybe we'll raise some money. Maybe we won't, we won't, who knows. And uh, we raised $10,000 that first year. And every year since then, uh, we've raised somewhere between 20 to $25,000 per year. Um, and all that money goes directly back to uh, students with medical diagnoses. So um, right back into our community and I really think the best part is that those students who need the help see everyone coming together for them. So they see 400 people volunteering on Super Bowl Sunday to make hoagies uh, for them. So it's been just a wonderful last six years. Um, and then we said, you know, even in these times, let's try to do it this year. So that's what our, our co-chairs, who I know you'll talk to later, um, said to us, they said, we have to do this. This is a big event and we absolutely have to pull up Hoagies for Hope in some way this year. Yeah. And the, um, obviously, you know, it is quite obvious that this year was going to be different than any other year. And I, and I can speak for the community. I know um, that once it was kind of out there that Hoagies for Hope was happening, uh, everybody, some people I remember remarked to me and said, wow, I can't believe they're doing it. Uh, and, but obviously everybody across the world was so pleased. So, you know, Mr. Summers has a, you know, a, a vast history, let's say, uh, uh, in his career of being involved with students, not just on this level. You're, he oversees the annual, you know, Clearview Theater production. He's a you know, JV's boys soccer coach involved with student council in the past. So, you know, Paul, in, in working with these young people and not just in the classroom, in, in the typical job of being a teacher um, and then getting to see them step up in these philanthropic ways. I mean, if you had to make a comment on that and what, it, what, what your vibe and feel in, in over the years, not just this year, and what that means to the community. Sure, so I, I will say that we didn't know how much students could really handle when we started this. So we thought we would have co-chairs, we would have you know the president and vice president of student council step up in some way. And we thought we would really handle the majority of it and have students help a little bit. Um, in actuality, uh, Mayor Manzo, it's been the exact opposite. So they have taken the reins of everything. They send emails to businesses for sponsorships. They run committee meetings this year via Zoom with hundreds of students. They uh, run all the activities for the day. They even, you probably, if you picked up a hoagie, you saw them running out to your car and, and delivering it this year. So. Uh, you know, what we have asked them, um, they have done, but they've gone well beyond what we could ever ask of them. So they have made this what it's become, you know, a, a volunteer event that is really district wide. And, you know, even elementary schools, we have the elementary schools involved as well. So it's yeah. really community wide, Mantua and Harrison together. So it, it's just an incredible event. And the students are the ones who do everything. Um, and that's the way it should be. Well, Paul Summers, I want to thank you for everything you do. I mean, look, you um, you just spoke to it, you know, very eloquently, which, you know, in in molding our young people, uh, our children, uh, I had all three of my kids go through the system here. 
it's not just in the classroom and the and and what you've given them uh, in this you know kind of rounding process at a young age, uh, starting like you said even as far back as elementary school when they get into high school years and they take the bull by the horns and and take the reins as you said uh, that even surprises those that are you know helping helping with it that that is why. I think that, you know, our community has such a strong bind and so many ties. It's all about that interconnectivity and youth, especially, uh, and, and the role that they play in it. So I want to thank you for everything that you do to support that. Um, this was another great success this year. And make sure that you pass that message along from the community on my behalf, uh, you know, from the community on my behalf to the rest of the staff there. Thanks I for all you do. Well. And we appreciate your support. And uh, we're just happy that we're able to, you know, help out some additional um, young people who really need some help with some medical diagnoses. So, um, so thank you for your support uh, and the community support as we've gone through this. Um, and you know, hopefully, uh, more great years to come for Hobies for Hope. Great, good seeing you, Paul. You too. Thanks, Mr. Renza. Okay. okay. Well, that brings us now to this year's Hobies for Hope event, and I have with me the co-chairs uh, of the event for 2021, which are Mary Maraca and. Gavin Corley, welcome. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Good to Thank see you guys. Uh, just a little bit of background in speaking with Mary and Gavin before we got started. You know, they told me that they were involved back in middle school in seventh grade, which was one of the first uh, Hoagie for Hopes events, we you know, back, back a few years ago. And they participated ever since. And now here we are. They're both juniors at Clearview and now they're co-chairs. The other interesting thing, uh, which I wasn't aware of until I spoke with them, is that these are actually uh, positions that you campaign for in a way. Uh, you you uh, you know seek to become the co-chairs, and you have slates of candidates. And in this case, there were three or four or five different slates of candidates, and uh, so they were nominated by their peers, and then they were elected by their peers to be the co-chairs of this year's event. So I want to welcome you, and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes because I know uh, this is become such a, a big event on, you know, on the Clearview docket every year, obviously for a great cause. We want to talk to you a little bit about that. This year was a little bit different. So let's just kind of jump right into that. And clearly, you know, you know to, not to overstate or understate the obvious, um, what was it that made this year's event more difficult compared to others? So with the pandemic and the uncertainty of the coronavirus, um, we were very restricted because we had to follow CDC guidelines of social distancing and the amount of in-person volunteers that we could have. Unfortunately, um, unlike past years, we were able to um, have multiple student volunteers, but this year we couldn't have them in. And on top of that, we had snowfall on the day of distribution, so that was a rough <laughs> <laughs> When it rains, it pours, or when it snows, yeah. it, you know, it blizzards. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, so, you know, looking back, and obviously, you know, as juniors, you've endured a year which really encompasses two school years that are unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just uh, on so many fronts. So maybe one of the obvious questions, and I know you mentioned earlier that the uh, the process of aligning yourself and seeking to become the co-chairs really starts in the summer uh, prior to the school year. So what is it, you know, that actually made you decide or as a, as a crew or team to decide to, to move forward with it this year? So we really wanted to um, not disappoint the members in our community and we really wanted to continue this um, tradition and we that we decided to continue Hoagie's Rope because we knew that 2020 wasn't the best year for many of us. And in order to start off a better year for not just us, but our recipients, the least we could do was hold this event. And just to have the drive to have the whole community come together and yeah. support one another, it's really inspired us. I mean, that kind of says it all. I mean, you know, that inspiration obviously leaked over to the community as a whole. And I can speak to that in just talking to people about it. And even some of the uh, responses when I know that we first were seeing 
you know, the marketing or advertisement of it coming out. And some, some people in my world were surprised that you were, you were having it and really, really pleased that it was moving forward. So, you know, kudos. Um, what is it that you hope that people get out of Hoagies for Hope? So um, we hope people realize that it really brings our community together. And whether we are donating like $5 or if people are buying a simple t-shirt or hoagie that all of this profit goes directly to the people in need. And once again, the impact is so much stronger and so much more great than we could even imagine. And although people couldn't volunteer their time this year since we couldn't have volunteers, I hope that it was overall uplifting in the community in the sense that they still could help out by donating and buying a hoagie. Well, again, I can speak to that. Absolutely. I'm sure. I, I know that that was the case. Uh, Gavin, you mentioned that on the day of the event, you actually, we had one of our snow events. So, you know, going in uh, to the to the week of, of the event and, and all the preparation that I know goes into it, you can describe that for us a little bit. What, what was your biggest concern going into the actual week of the event? So, yeah, our definitely, our, one of our biggest concerns was the actual, if we could have the event still, just in that if it was on on the border of, of coming through and just that the whole COVID-19 virus and if we could distribute the hoagies properly and if we could have the cafeteria staff make them for us, which they did and it was very generous of them too. Yeah. Do you happen to have, and I know that this is an off the cuff question, not something we, we talked about, but do you have in your head some of the data or numbers as far as, um, you know, number of hoagies and fundraising and so forth. Give me some of that. So I think the, I think the total amount raised was around $19,000, which was great split between two uh, recipients. That's incredible. I know that I was looking at that and it talked about the, you know, since the inception, the amount raised, I didn't realize that the breakdown was $19,000 this year. So congratulations, clearly very successful. You know, lots of schools uh, in the area, you, know, you even see it on TV advertised, uh, schools in PA do different you know, hoagie drives or things like this. What is it that makes Clearview's version of it different? I think that Hope is Your Hope is, in the Cleary version has really strong roots that, that makes such a great tradition. And it's a great tr tradition, tradition for our school. And to know that the Hoagie Drive goes straight back to the community and among, it, it creates like a, almost a personal touch, that, like a fundraiser that we can like help out our community. So obviously uh, it, it's very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at a, at a young age, you know, the give back aspect, the give back to the community is something that's already a, a big part of uh, your makeup. It sounds like if you all the way back in seventh grade, when you were like 13 years old, you were getting involved with philanthropic things like this. And now here you are as juniors chair. So I want to, on behalf of the community as a whole, uh, speak for them. I know that I can and saying thank you so much because, uh, like you said earlier, was alluded to earlier, there's been so much, you know, uns uncertainty and, and even pain in the last year on so many different levels that it makes you appreciate, makes all of us appreciate just the little things. And this not being a little thing, to be able to pull it off is really just tremendous. So anything you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Just thank you to the community. Thank you for helping us out to help other communities, community members out. Yeah, we just wanna say thank you again to the community for really um, making this event happen. And we are very fortunate to have Hoagies for Hope this year. So Gavin Corley and Mayor Maraca, co-chairs of Hoagies for Hope 2021, thank you for your time. Good luck for the rest of the school year and the summer, and then hopefully a normal and regular senior year next year. Congratulations, Thank and Thank thanks you. again. Bye-bye.